In 1911, when they started this event, uh, most people wouldn't have thought a car could go 500 miles. There was a very small number of vehicles registered in North America on the range of 20 to 30,000 vehicles. Someone in St. Louis opened the paper the next day. He sees where someone in Indianapolis drives 500 miles, and he asks himself, why don't I have one of those? By 1915, there was 3.5 million cars registered in North America. That's how quickly these kinds of events can have an impact. We're here to demonstrate that you can take a vehicle 500 miles utilizing electric technology from the vehicle standpoint and charging technology from real power built here on the north side of town that puts the two products together in an event that will take us less than a full day to travel the distance it would be from here to Atlanta, Georgia. The event will start at 9 a.m. Two drivers, both the professional race car drivers, Roger Yasakawa, a five-year veteran of the Indianapolis 500. The second driver, Johnny Miller, We'll start the event about 20 minutes after Roger, such that we can bring one vehicle in at a time, charge it for the 15 to 20 minute charge cycle. That'll allow that vehicle to start again on its second duration, and we'll stagger these two cars through the 500 mile event. We hope to be finished with the first event, the first crossing of 500 miles, approximately 6.30 in the evening, or about nine hours and 30 minutes. The second will be one pitch beyond that, or about another 30 minutes. A good day. Yep, it's a great. Without the acceptance of EV, you're not going to get to the levels that the EPA hopes to get to by 2015, by 2025. These are very substantial changes in the rates of fuel consumption. The way you do that is you take a vehicle that gets, as an example here, we're talking about 100 miles to the gallon now, not 30 miles to the gallon or 40 miles to the gallon. You integrate that in with other vehicles, and now you have a proper mix. This is not going to be every vehicle in America, I know that. It's going to be in ratios, maybe a third the stage of vehicle, a third hybrid, and a third traditional vehicle. The vehicle that has the ability to go that 100 miles on one gallon of fuel and can be rapidly recharged, 15 minutes, lunch break kinds of things, opens up that third to a much larger population of the public. And that's really what this is about also. We started under a, a, a cloud relationship, but it turned into a fairly significant rain event for us. Uh, that creates drag that actually uh, requires us to use more charge to go the same distance. Uh, we gave up uh, probably 10 or 15 percent of our capacity in the early going. Uh, days opened up now a little bit. We've got some clear skies. Track is dry now. What do you think about maybe doing a short charge cycle? That's a good idea. I mean, you said before that we get most of our charge in the first half of the cycle. So if you, if you cut down the time, get the more efficient power cycle and get out there again, it could be a better time overall. The charge rate decays over a period of the 20 minute or so cycle time that it takes to charge the vehicle. One way to circumvent that is to short charge the, the battery run it to a half a potential in 10 minutes and see what the balance is relative to time on track minus time on charge. Johnny will be starting that test here mid-race. Mid if that's beneficial, we'll transport that over to the, the green car at the next stop. Just got the two bars, just got the two bars with 11 kilometers. Alrighty team, uh, I will be beating this lap for sure. Copy that. One bar, we'll fit next time by. Copy. Coming in, payload. What is your speed, Roger? Throughout the stint, I think I average about 89, 90 kilometers. Looking pretty good, so I'm gonna try to pick up the pace a little bit here. 195 complete. 197, that is 199. White flag, Roger, keep it up. Good job, Roger. That was a great day. Just wanted to uh, thank all the crew for the nice work. I'm very happy to be part of uh, the EV 500 mile race. It was big in terms of knowing that technology is there to do 500 miles with an electric car. It's just a question of having all the infrastructure in place, which sooner or later I'm sure it's going to be placed in. You know, I think together with that, I'm sure the car's range is going to extend over years. So I think, you know, combination of that, hey, you never know, you, we might see an Indy 500 with all electric cars. So it was a history making day for sure. Our goal was to be efficient today and we accomplished that. So I'm very happy with the result. To be running uh, the first uh, 
EV500 is just an absolute, it's a fantastic day. You know, it, it, was, uh, it was long, obviously this is an endurance event, and, uh, but I believe we proved the technology to charge these vehicles is here, and uh, it was really, it was a great day at the racetrack. There's no tire marks and no broken glass, and uh, everybody's still smiling at the end of the day. A little, little bit of rain, a little bit of rain. Well, we had a tremendous effort from the team here at Contra Harding Real Power. Uh, incredible effort from the drivers. Uh, this was a team event, there's no other way to describe it. We had a full court press from about 20 different people in the organization, uh, all dedicated to accomplishing a goal. It took longer than we wanted. We had a lot of obstacles in front of us, but uh, our equipment worked uh, as designed, as planned. After the event, being first at this, being the first people to come out here, and to our knowledge, anywhere on these kinds of vehicles from 500 miles, gives us a feeling of satisfaction and success.